Hey, welcome. Sunday morning worship service. Uh, inviting you to the table this morning. Uh, live at North Baptist, Pastor Kim Wilcox. Uh, a little bit different than what we normally do, but uh, uh, this morning that's where we are at in the process of everything. Uh, we've experienced uh, COVID in the household over the last couple weeks, so we are in uh, lockdown. The church uh, for precautionary measures has uh, chose not to do in person this morning, so we're going to do uh, the, the Facebook Live. So this morning we invite you to share this on your page. Uh, we're excited to be able to come together. It's been a, a real process in the midst of it, but uh, again, here we here we are. So uh, this morning we're going to be in Genesis chapter 22. Uh, if you'd like to take your Bibles and get uh, going that direction, uh, we're going to be kind of continuing on with our um, gospel foundation Bible study. Uh, this morning's message is from chapter four, Genesis chapter 22. It's uh, Abraham's tested, and so our faith being tested this morning is going to be the message. Again, I'd encourage you to share this on your page, allow others to uh, take part in Bible study or worship service with us. Uh, again, we won't be uh, doing the, the singing, the other things this morning, but we will have uh, a message. So, <clears throat> we're glad to have you this morning. Uh, a few announcements this week. We're going to try to do the uh, Tuesday Food Pantry at North. For those of you that can work, uh, we will still be in uh, lockdown here at the house uh, on our uh, time with COVID. Uh, but for others, uh, they encourage you to come and to take part in that uh, 1 to 4. And then also on Thursday from uh, 1 to 4 in Pomona at the Food Pantry, there will be a delivery this week. Uh, so... If we can get lots of help for that as well, that would be uh, really appreciative. And then Sunday morning, we'll be back to in-person at North, uh, live at 10.30. Uh, I'm not sure that we will be there. I'm not sure how it's going to go for us throughout the week with uh, the COVID, the uh, girls testing and everything within our household. But uh, anyway, we, uh, uh, we will be back kind of a normal fashion next Sunday. Uh, so we invite you to uh, join us in. Uh, Wednesday night, we're going to try to do Bible study uh, at 7 again. Uh, we skipped last week as well, but uh, we should be back kind of in a, a process with that. So that's kind of our announcements this morning. Uh, prayer concerns, do want you to continue to pray for uh, baby crew. Uh, he got to the point where he was able to come home, uh, so the family is... Uh, just ecstatic, elated, uh, just excited about uh, having the baby home. And there are still lots of prayer concerns. So uh, because the baby is home, uh, don't uh, give up on your uh, really uh, intentional uh, prayers for him. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, pray for uh, Danny and Beth Payne, our new director of missions. Uh, Steve Green, which is Joe Brandle's brother-in-law, is having... Uh, some recovery process problems with his cancer. Uh, do want you to continue to lift him up. Uh, continue to lift up the Bryant Kennard family in prayer. Uh, pray for uh, Cora and her recovery. Uh, Jessica, uh, Cora's granddaughter with uh, recovery from uh, surgery that she recently had. Uh, pray for Linda Sears' recovery for her uh, knee. We pray that uh, she will start to find strength and, and pain-free and able to get up and going as well. Uh, I pray for Jake Skidell uh, in the Marines in Japan. He also has an unspoken, and uh, we want to continue to lift him up as he uh, serves and uh, does the things that God has called him to do as well. Uh, we do have our usual list of uh, shut-ins that we... Uh, lift up in prayer, Don and Pat, and and uh, and then Ruth and Jerry and Rex, and Darlene and Irma and Dee and uh, Francis. Uh, do continue to pray for uh, Donna for strength uh, for that procedure that she recently had, and then uh, uh, praise that Shannon was able to come home from the hospital, and so we pray for strength and uh, ability for her as well. 
uh, continue to pray for Tony and Michelle and uh, just health and strength. Uh, uh, Belinda for recovery, uh, Scott and Tanya for an unspoken, and then want to continue to pray for Patty, Sister Shirley. Uh, I believe the chemo is is over at this point, uh, but uh, want to continue to pray for strength for her sister Shirley as well. <clears throat> and so with that this morning, if you would uh, join me in prayer. You know, Lord, we are so thankful for your grace and your mercy and, and Lord, for your presence. And uh, we do know, Lord, that uh, not everything uh, always is the way that we see it. Uh, but, Lord, it is the way that you have uh, uh, worked through it. And so, Lord, we pray for each one of these lives that were mentioned this morning, Lord. I think especially of baby crew and just uh, continued... Uh, need for uh, prayer, for health, for strength uh, for that young man. And Lord, we just ask for your hand to be upon him, uh, upon the family, that they would uh, truly uh, see and feel your presence. Lord, that you would guide and direct them in a, in a truly mighty way. That you give that young man a testimony that is uh, far beyond uh, what we can imagine. Lord, we do pray for several within our church body who have uh, uh, been... Uh, stricken by the COVID bug now, and Lord, we're thankful that uh, so far the seriousness of it has been uh, on the mild side, and uh, Lord, we, we give you praise and testimony for that, and you as you continue to uh, strengthen those that uh, are stricken by the bug, and that you provide strength and encouragement, and uh, maneuver them uh, on out of uh, the the COVID sense do the recovery sense. Uh, Lord, we pray for those that uh, experience weekly uh, things of shut-in and, and uh, loneliness. And uh, Lord, we pray for your strength to be upon them, that you would uh, minister to them in a, in a mighty way. Uh, Lord, we think of those who have lost loved ones like the Kennard family. And Lord, we continue to pray for comfort. We pray for encouragement. Uh, Lord, we pray for a sense of some type of understanding in the midst of what seems to be uh, chaos and confusion. And so, Lord, we do pray for each one of these names that were listed. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this Sunday morning that we can worship you. And, Lord, it's exciting to know that as we, as we pray this morning that uh, uh, no matter how many other churches, how many other places, individuals are praying at the same time, Lord, you, you hear each one of us. Uh, we're excited to know that and to be a part of it. And so, Lord, just uh, <coughs> continue to guide and direct us. Uh, Lord, we, we thank you for your provisions in our lives. Uh, we pray that uh, we're able to share that and the goodness of your love with those around us. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, this morning we're going to be in, uh, really in Genesis chapter 22 uh, for a short time. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Abraham. Uh, we left off a couple weeks ago uh, with a message uh, about Abraham and uh, being called out of uh, just idol worship and uh, just uh, not knowing who God even is to one who would uh, hear God's call and to follow him. And so in Genesis <coughs> chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, in the scripture it says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Now take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains in which I shall tell you. And we see now, from the point of Abraham being called to being the father of many nations, is what God would told him, he now asking him to sacrifice the only son that he has. And so from the end of Genesis chapter 11, where we're introduced to Abram, uh, to this point in Genesis 22, a lot of things have have taken place. As I mentioned before, Abraham's family were idol worshippers. Uh, God called Abraham uh, even before Abraham knew who God was. <coughs> and when God called Abraham, he said, leave your country, your people, and your father's household. 
So Abraham left everything he knew to follow the one true God. And so was it easy? Uh, no. I think it was a struggle all the way for Abraham. But he kept going forward and following God because it was the right thing to do. God said, I'll bless you with land, with descendants. I'll make Abraham's name great. And so Abraham, he might have understood a lot of things, <coughs> but he struggled for a long time trying to understand how he was going to have as many descendants as the stars in the sky when he and Sarah hadn't even had any children. They were old in age and had not been blessed with children yet. And then finally the son of God's promise was born. So Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah. Even when they were old, even when they were past the childbearing years. And Abraham was blessed, he was amazed, he was overjoyed. So God's word then is true. Abraham saw it take place before his eyes, and then Genesis 22 happens. This bomb drops upon all that had taken place, all that this joy and encouragement and excitement that Abraham has. Abraham, as best as he could, was obeying God on this new journey, but, but nothing was like this. Nothing could have prepared Abraham for something like this, to sacrifice his son. Or was Abraham prepared? So God says, take your son, your only son, the one you love, Isaac, Go to the area of Mount Moriah, and I will show you the place and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. So he calls Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son. And as Abraham hears God's call on his life, he steps up and again puts his faith into action. So can you imagine it then? I mean, I mean, really imagine it. To be asked to sacrifice your own son or daughter would be bad enough, but here God is asking Abraham to sacrifice the son that God promised that he would have as many descendants as the stars in the sky. In Genesis chapter 21 verse 12, God told Abraham, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. So even though God said it would be through Isaac's lineage that Abraham's descendants would be counted, and if he counted as the stars in the heavens, he's now asking Abraham to sacrifice this very son. So why did God call Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? Well, the Bible really doesn't go into great detail about answering that question, but what we do know is this. God's call to Sacrifice Isaac was a test of Abraham's faith. And so God tests come in our lives in a way to, to purify our faith. It's kind of like silver being refined by fire. It's in the process of refining those metals like silver. The waste materials are separated when they're purified by smelting. Now, smelting involves the heating to an intense heat and melting metals like silver with this heat that causes dross, which is scum, to rise to the top. 
at that point where it rises to the top, it can be lifted, it can be scooped out. And then what we have left is seeing God's fulfilling promises in our, in our lives. And it's amazing because <clears throat> sometimes what he scoops out can even be a seed of faith for someone else as they see you go through things and can't understand how you get through what you do. A few years ago, I heard the analogy of Christians being like pumpkins. We have those today for you. Of course, we're not physically like pumpkins, right? We're not orange. We might be round. But we're not filled with orange gunk and seeds. But the analogy is what I want you to see this morning when we're talking about our faith being tested. Just like Abraham was called, we're, we're hand-selected by God. We're hand-picked. We're chosen. And in John 15, 16, it says, Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. So that whatever you may ask in my name, the Father will give you. So like Abraham, we are hand-picked. And then we're hand-washed. <coughs> you know, God makes us clean. We all know how dirty pumpkins can appear at times. And in order to clean them, we have to wash them. And for us, it's the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins. All those things that make us, as humans, unclean. Now, a pumpkin has an inside and an outside, just like us. And so not only does God washes clean on the outside. He removes our sin. And in doing so, we are washed clean and made new through Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. So we've been hand-picked, we've been hand-washed, and we spoke about being cleaned on the inside and the out. And so, like Abraham, in our scripture today, God opens us up to see what's on the inside. And so God carefully removes our seeds of doubt and hate and greed. <coughs> In Romans chapter 6, it says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we no longer are slaves to sin. So instead of holding on to these unfruitful seeds <coughs> now during times of testing God brings those things to the top as he brings them up and opens them he cleanses us of those bad seeds he replaces them with seeds of Faith and hope and love. <coughs> now here's the thing. As those bad seeds are being scooped away, others see what's going on in your life. And so, like Isaac and all the people of Abraham's day, they've seen how Abraham responded as the 
gunk was being taken out of Abraham. They see how they responded to God's test. And so in our lives, it can help as well because as each one of those seeds of doubt and grief and sorrow and pain and hurt are scooped away, what is left is those good seeds of love and hope and joy and peace. And so we don't want to hold on to these sinful seeds that are in our lives. We want to allow God to scoop those seeds away. And as we go through these times of testing, then we are assured that others see as we go through these things. And like Abraham, as we as we trust him, as we trust God, and we see and find his promises, others can find that as well. Now the great thing about it is that God just doesn't end there. <coughs> Once he handpicks and hand wash and Start to scoop out all the dross and impurities and sin in our lives and cleanses us. He, he doesn't just leave us empty and void. He turns and in fact carves a new little smiley face upon us. And once we begin to follow God with our lives, that we commit our lives to God like Abraham, then God will bring joy into our lives. And then that smile on your face becomes living proof of God living within you. In Psalms chapter 71, verse 23, it says, My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. But again, with God in our lives, he, he hand picks us and hand washes us. He starts to scoop out all the things that are in there that doesn't need to be there, those impurities and that sin, and he cleanses us. But he doesn't just leave us empty and void. He puts on a new little smiley face upon us, and that face comes from him and him alone and then what he does is he puts his light inside us <coughs> for all the others to see See, that's when God shines through us for all to see. When Jesus comes to dwell within us, you shine from the inside out. All people around to see. And so through the darkness of whatever occasion you might be experiencing, you can reflect his light to bring glory to the Father. One of my favorite Bible verses is Matthew 5, 16. It says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So it doesn't matter <coughs> excuse me, whether you celebrate Halloween or not. It doesn't really matter whether you like pumpkins or not. This analogy this morning is powerful enough that it should speak to each one of us. John chapter 1 verse 5 says, The light shines in the darkness. 
and the darkness has not overcome it. So at a time today in our world where there's so much darkness, we have an opportunity to be a shining light to all the believers and unbelievers everywhere. Remember, Abraham was called out of the darkness. Before he even knew who God was, God called him, and he responded. And he followed God with his life, and his life was dramatically changed. And so you need to begin to pray for those that you know that do not believe. Your friends, your family, your colleagues. And show each one of them the love of Christ and the light that Jesus can shine in them. So today I want to encourage you to try to be a pumpkin. Can you do that for me? So these trials, these testings that we go through in various ways, but they may come in different ways for each one of us. But one thing like Abraham becoming a Christian will often require us to move out of our comfort zone and to put our faith into action. To allow God to scoop out the dross, the impurities in our lives to cleanse us and make us whole. To put his light inside us to shine for all to see. That's why Jesus' half-brother James wrote in his letter, James chapter 1, verse 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Some testing of our faith comes in small ways, like maybe daily irritations. But they can also be severe afflictions. <coughs> whatever source of testing comes your way, we need to be reminded that it's to our benefit to undergo these trials and allow God to turn even these bad situations and circumstances to good for His glory. And throughout the scripture, there are many examples of positive results of being tested. And it's in that testing of our faith that God causes us to grow into strong disciples who truly live by faith and not by what we see. And so the most comforting thing of all this morning is that we know that God will never allow us to be tested beyond what we're able to handle by His power. His grace is sufficient for us. His power is made perfect in our weakness. That's why the Apostle Paul said, For Christ's sake, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, For Christ's sake I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And so this morning I encourage you to be like the pumpkin. When those testing and times come, allow God to scoop away those impurities in our lives. To cleanse us, to make us whole, to put his light inside us, to shine before so others will see. And I want to encourage you that even through the midst of his scooping away of our impurities, and we see those seeds of discord and distraught and trouble that as others see God scooping those things away in our lives that one very seed could be the seed that brings life to them so it does make a difference in how we respond it does make a difference in how we go through things and is it easy? No, it's not easy. Uh, it wasn't easy for Abraham either. 
But we don't do it in our strength. We don't do it in our power. We do it in the strength and the power that God enables each one of us to have. So with that this morning, <clears throat> if you'd join me in prayer. Lord, again this morning we are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to gather again. And I know it's uh, different. I know it's a different way in which we have came together this morning. And Lord, I do pray for strength for each one of those that have encountered this COVID bug. And Lord, I pray that your uh, healing hand will be upon each individual life and that it will give a testimony to those to <coughs> be able to combat uh, the enemy at this time. Lord, I pray for this week for each one of these individuals who have been part of uh, worship service this morning, Lord, that you will strengthen them and encourage them and Lord, that you would lift them up. That you would allow them to see that your work in their lives is really your desire, your purpose. And so, Lord, we give you praise for this day. Again, I just thank you that we have an opportunity to do things like this. I know this morning's a little different than what we normally do, but uh, uh, again, we just give you praise and acknowledge you for that as well. So, Lord, we thank you, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You know, I uh, <coughs> do want to encourage you again to be able to share this on your on your page, uh, that you would uh, invite others to uh, share in worship service or Bible study with you. Uh, again, Wednesday night at 7, we'll be live and we'll be in uh, uh, chapter 4, uh, Abraham Tested, in uh, the Gospel Foundations this week. Uh, that'll help in the midst of uh, gaining and uh, encouraging your faith. Again, these Bible studies are great because it's an opportunity to be able to kind of move from Genesis to Revelation, kind of looking at a, a quick look uh, of all the things that uh, God would like to have us to see. Again, we'll be a part of those Bible studies. Uh, we encourage you to share those with others. Uh, we encourage you to uh, continue to give, even like today when... Uh, there is no in-person services. Uh, there are still ways to give through uh, mailing a check to the church, uh, writing attention to Linda on it, or you can also give through Generosity by Lifeway app, or you can download on your phone, your app, your PC, and uh, do that secretly and securely from your home. Uh, you can even track what you give and uh, be a part of the ministries that, uh, you know, like the Lighthouse, like... Uh, his Way, like Hope House, like uh, the Martinez Family, uh, Bethel Christian Academy, uh, uh, Life Care, multiple of them uh, that we uh, give to on a, on a monthly basis. And so with that, this evening, this morning, I mean, uh, we're excited to uh, have you had joined us. Uh, again, I encourage you to share this on your page, whether you watch this now or in the, in the days to come, uh, whenever you see it, just... Uh, share it over. Uh, again, don't forget your hand picked, hand washed, hand dipped, and cleaned. And it's through Jesus that He puts His light within each one of us. So thank you this morning for joining us. Looking forward to being back with each one of you soon. Uh, we do covet your prayers for uh, recovery from this COVID bug and uh, as for God's guidance and direction in each one of these lives. So again, this morning, we thank you, we love you, and if you need anything in the meantime, be sure and let us know. Uh, other than that, we'll see you Wednesday night. Goodbye.